the Hoka Mach 5. At this stage in the game, at 150 plus miles, is it time to retire this shoe? Let's talk about it. So, before we get into the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you're ready to subscribe, watch this content. Thanks so much, I love you guys a lot. Specs for the shoe, right here. And, first thing I guess we're going to talk about is what the outsoles look like as, A, it's just traditional on this channel to do so, and B, it's uh, a very important talking piece to this shoe. So, this is what they look like on my left foot. This is what it looks like on the right foot, all things considered. And if we do our regular breakdown, I guess the first thing to address is that there's still an even, a fairly even wear and tear between both shoes. As last year with the Mach 4, I had a massive inconvenience of one shoe wearing out more than the other. And it was just a case of just an imbalance in my running stride. And then as you run slower and kind of correct it and uh, do some more treadmill workouts, you can start fixing all that. So at this point, yes, the wear is still fairly even minus a few pieces on both shoes. So in this case, the right foot is still just a smidgen more beat up than the left foot, as you can see in key areas here. So again, the key areas for me here is on the outside of the forefoot area, a little bit on this, uh, you know, on the arch area of the shoe and also on the forefoot area of this particular um, portion of the shoe. So if you kind of compare it, you'll see that the left foot is not as badly beat up in these particular areas. And you'll also see that we're almost at a point where we're touching the Profly Plus in this area of the Hoka Mach 5. So until we hit the Mach 5, I think, I, not the Mach 5, until we hit the Profly Plus in the Mach 5, I think I'm still going to have some life on it. But also from a side angle, there's still plenty of Profly, uh, well, Profly is okay. It's the EVA here that's in, still in good shape and probably has plenty of lifespan to go through. So, as long as my running stride is good, I think we're going to be okay on this end. So, that's kind of a good thing that at 150 plus miles, the shoe is still going to be holding up fairly well. Now, I've got maybe one of two potential cons to look at for this shoe right now. One may be partially the shoe and the other... Uh, other piece of it also might be partially just me. So, as you can also see from this upper, the laces have been very tight on this shoe. And as you can probably guess, I'm tightening the shoe a lot more than I used to, uh, particularly in this area. And as a result, there is some kind of scrunching here at the very uh, front of the shoelace uh, knot area. And it's something I noticed just recently. And as I started running a little bit more, I kind of feel a little bit of instability with my foot inside the shoe, but I also feel like the shoe is also a lot larger than it used to be. So my thoughts here is like, okay, is the shoe actually starting to get um, oversized for my foot is in the terms of like, is my foot getting stronger to the point where the tendons in my foot are starting to kind of scrunch up a little bit more, uh, stiff enough, tighten to the point where I should no longer be running in a size eight and a half and I should drop down to a size eight shoe or is there something going on in the shoe that is allowing for more room for the foot to, you know, kind of move around and mobilize within the toe box and maybe even the heel area? And both are actually possibilities. So my story with Hoka here is that when I had the Arahi, I think it was 16 or 15, I think it was Arahi 16 back in the day, I had a size 9 and whenever I was running in the shoe, I got black toenails because the shoe was too big and every time I was running my toes would continue you know hitting the toe box. So that was a surefire sign that I needed to drop in size and when I went to like size eight and a half at the time it was a really good idea definitely saved me a lot of toes and a lot of you know worries after that. It's possible that I'm reaching that stage again. I'm not reaching like black toenail stage because maybe my foot's a lot stronger than it was in 2016. But it's possible that maybe I should be dropping with this particular shoe to a size 8 to have the most snug fit possible. Because, again, it's possible that this foam, not the foam, but like the uh, padding on the side of the shoe may be starting to uh, fold in a little bit more to the mobility that my heel and my ankle is putting on the pressures of the side of the shoe, maybe in the back of the heel collar here. And I'm opening up the shoe in that sense. And we may have that same padding somewhere along the inside for the most part i don't see it i think it's mostly in this heel collar area so it's very likely that 
whatever I'm doing with the shoe in the heel collar area, it may be impacting the movement that's going on in my forefoot area and as a result gives you a sensation that the shoe is starting to get too big or you're uh, sized up from your average shoe. So that's something I've noticed and something I'm going to be monitoring and watching as I kind of go along here. So that's something major to consider if you think you're buying a Hoka shoe and you expect it to be true to size. It might be my personal recommendation for the long run to go a half size down and see how it feels. If it doesn't feel right, just go true to size to whatever you use with Nike or I guess New Balance. Those are like two sh uh, shoe sizes that I think relatively follow each other pretty well. So stick with that and kind of just see what happens. So that's the point number one. And then point number two, of course, uh, that may be a con is I'm starting to experience a little bit of like peroneal tendon soreness in the shoe. So this could, again, be a result of maybe the ProFly and the EVA foam reacting in a way where the shoe is supinating once more again. Or it's possible that, again, this padding in the heel area might be meshing or kind of folding less and losing its form around the heel ankle area. And I'm getting a little bit more mobility than when I originally had the shoe in and I had that snug fit. So there's a couple of things that are going on here, which is just basically showing that the shoe is starting to, like, in a way, besides the foam kind of degrade, like, the areas of the shoe are starting to become less mobile-friendly uh, to at least my running style. So this is just something I'm monitoring, just watching. And yeah, at 150 plus miles, you know, the shoe is still in pretty okay condition. I've lost, again, the majority of the grip, as most people can guess, the lifespan of the shoe is not great because it doesn't have like, you know, rubber on the outsole. It just has just a foam padding that can like burn through very quickly. So that's the one thing to, of course, monitor. The upper is in, you know, the mesh is still in pretty good shape, but this tuck here is got me curious that maybe the shoe is starting to open up a little bit more and, you know, it's not as snug as it used to be. So these are just things I'm beginning to watch and just monitor a little bit more as I go along. So maybe I need to get a thicker sock when I run in this shoe starting now. It's possible. We'll see what happens, but that's kind of the case right now. So, yeah, overall thoughts on 150 plus miles. Still good for me to run in, still a good daily trainer, good speed workout shoe, still comfortable, no major injuries or anything I'm noting from it. And uh, yeah, we're just going to see where it's at at 200 plus miles because the shoe is rated to be 200 to 300 miles of, you know, life before it really starts taking, you know, uh, a real tanking in people's books. So we'll see how it goes from that point. So if you stuck around to this point in the video, again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, thanks for watching this review. I'll see you guys in the next one.